I am not in a great place right now, creatively. Um, I've just, for the past two weeks, I've just been torturing myself about my work. Uh, and I've spent the whole morning literally just going through old photos and um, thinking they're all shit. That's shit. That's shit. Why take that photo? You know, it's just, it's not fun. Um, and, uh, you know, don't console me or anything. I'm not fishing for compliments. This is something that comes up every now and then. I go through these phases and, uh, ultimately what it is, is it's the overwhelming desire. And when I say overwhelming, I mean crushing desire to, um, create a meaningful body of work. And it's really difficult to know if you're doing that for one. But also, I don't know that any artist, and I hate referring my, to myself as an artist, but um, I don't know that any artist um, ever fully feels like they're creating a, a meaningful body of work. And maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that's what keeps you creating more work. I don't know. But um, basically, it's been uncomfortable. I need to do something about it. It doesn't feel good. And uh, when I'm in situations like this, there's a uh, saying that I try to keep in mind and I try to repeat to myself. Um, and to talk about that, I want to show you something. So I recently had this custom hat made and uh, I know I'm one of those guys now that wears one of these. Uh, but don't give me any shit about it because I swear I'm only going to wear this when I'm getting brunch with the girls or it's Coachella season and I can't find my flower crown. Um, don't worry, the trucker hats aren't going anywhere. But uh, I've been wanting to get a hat like this made for a real long time and I think I've finally built up the courage to wear a full brim hat out in public. But anyway, when I got the hat made, the hat maker gave me the option to put in a saying on the sweatband on the inside, something meaningful to me. I had him put in, it's hard for thee to kick against the prick. Now, prick is actually supposed to be plural there. It's supposed to be pricks. Um, I screwed that one up. But uh, I guess it makes the hat more unique and uh, uniquely mine. But um, it's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. So I got that saying from uh, one of my favorite songs, a Johnny Cash song uh, called When the Man Comes Around. But it's originally from the Bible. Now, pricks, in this instance, doesn't mean the thing that's going to get me banned from YouTube. Um, a prick is a type of uh, farm implement used to goad animals forward. So let's say you have like an ox pulling a plow, you might use a prick, which is a sharp thing, to motivate it forward. Um, and understandably so, sometimes the animal can kick against it because they don't like being poked. So it's hard for thee to kick against the pricks is really a call to uh, not fight the thing that's motivating you forward. Um, call it God or the universe or fate or call it nothing at all. It's just the thing that's pushing you forward without your real conscious effort. You know, I may have these creative urges to shoot certain things, uh, to shoot them a certain way, and that is the pricks pushing me forward. It's something that's motivating me to take a certain type of picture. And when I start kicking against them, like I am right now, doubting why I'm taking that photo, is it meaningful, should I even bother, is anyone gonna care about the photo? That's me kicking against the pricks. So I'm trying to keep in mind that I need to not kick against the pricks. I just need to take the next picture. Whatever that is, not overanalyze it, don't dissect it, don't question what the, uh, the motivation is, just do it. And I know from experience that that is what will get me out of this mire that I'm in. And so that brings me to the photo I want to take in this video. It's not a particularly special or unique photo, it's just I happen to be in a bad place right now. And so I've been really doubting this photo. I've been hemming and hawing about it. And um, I need to just go out and do it. And so that's what we're going to do. And I'm going to have to go full construction camo on this one. Orange vest, uh, boots, might even 
throw in a tool belt if I'm feeling saucy, but uh, let's get to it. All right, so we are going to attempt this this morning, but I think I'm going to be cutting it kind of close. I'm trying to hit it in very particular light. I want the uh, morning cloud cover to burn off um, at just the right moment to give me soft light on the, uh, the building, but have a little bit of open sky behind it. And that's like a super tiny window. Um, you know, it's like just a couple of minutes. So I gotta be in the right spot, uh, ready to go, uh, or I'm gonna miss it. And um, I'm cutting it close. I think I'm gonna miss it. So if I get there, and uh, too late, I'm just gonna have to come back another day. But hopefully that doesn't happen some video stuff and uh, to be honest I really don't feel like doing this today and that's a combination of having too much on my plate today and uh, not really wanting to go sit in the center divider of a busy street and also just feeling like all my work is crap. Well, I was right about cutting it close. By the time I got there, the clouds were completely burned off and we had that kind of harsh open sun, which is not what I wanted on this scene. So, um, you know, that's okay. It's part of the process. Luckily, uh, this location is only about 10 minutes drive from my house here. So uh, I'll just have to go back and try it again and maybe try it a third or fourth or fifth time. Um, but this light I'm trying to get is actually really hard to get because it just, uh, it's very fleeting and it doesn't happen every day. Um, so basically these types of scenes, normally I like to shoot them at dawn or dusk because that gives me the, generally the mood I like to get in these types of photos. But this uh, lawnmower shop is not open any time of the year during dawn or dusk. And um, I actually want to photograph it when it's open for a couple reasons. There's a, a truck that's always in the parking lot, which I assume is the business owner. I like that truck being there. And there's a bunch of lawnmowers out front that uh, I'm assuming get brought in when they close. So I want that stuff out there, which means I got to shoot it when they're open. Um, so I could just shoot it on a clear day, midday, and get that kind of open sun with no clouds, but I don't like that type of lighting for these types of scenes. You know, if it's like a desert scene, an abandoned building out in the middle of the desert, sure, that's great. Uh, it goes really well with that type of subject matter, and I do like that look um, on abandoned buildings in the desert. But for this type of scene, I need light that's a little more ethereal, something that adds more of a mood uh, to, the, to the scene. So the type of light I want is actually my favorite type of light, of any type of light, um, but it doesn't happen very often. And basically, if you can imagine, um, when it comes to sunlight, natural sunlight, uh, think of it as a continuum. On one end, you have completely exposed open sun where you get those hard edge, harsh shadows with high contrast. And then at the other end, you have completely diffused light. So think a completely overcast day. The light is so diffused that you can't even tell exactly where the sun is in the sky because the clouds are blocking it and diffusing it. And the shadows are so soft that oftentimes you can't even see them. So that's kind of a continuum. I want light that's right about here. I want it to be somewhat directional, meaning you can tell where it's coming from because the shadows have a very clear direction, but it's diffused enough that the shadows don't have that hard edge. Every time I'm out just in daily life, not taking pictures, and I see that light, I just soak it in because everything is gorgeous under that light. 
but it's so fleeting because you basically need the cloud cover to burn off just the right amount, not too much, not too little, to get that, that light. The good news is uh, we get a lot of clear days, but we also get a lot of cloudy mornings that burn off to a, to a clear day. And so right when it burns off, that's when I gotta be there. So hopefully over the next couple weeks, we'll get more of those cloudy mornings um, that are gonna burn off and I can make sure I'm in the right position at the right time to get just the right light. been hemming and hawing a lot about my composition uh, getting nitpicky about the placement of things my height and my angle and all that but I think I'm finally happy with what I got and I'm feeling real good about the weather because it's been cloudy plenty long enough for me to hem and haw but it should be burning off pretty soon here Actually, I'm kind of lucking out today because there's a, a gate that goes into the backyard of this shop. It's normally closed or blocked. It's open today. So you can see all the lawnmowers piled up back there, which I think is pretty freaking awesome. So focus is uh, dialed in. Composition is dialed in. And we wait for the light get how I want it using my 150 millimeter lens by the way kind of wish it was like a 140 need just a little more breathing room around these things but whatever wow got honked at even wearing the orange vest The worst thing about shooting from this center divider, aside from the fact that it's a particularly busy road, is that the uh, center divider, as you can see, is super tall. It's actually raised up so high, it's like some like freaking lighthouse out here. Oh, I really want these clouds to break. other work to do today. Now this isn't a particularly bad part of town, but it does seem to be the sex shop slash strip club district. Because within a stone's throw of Frank's lawnmower here, we have uh, Cali girls, we have pink and naughty, and uh, my personal favorite, the perfectly named Spankies. So, uh, you know. I don't think I will be uh, patronizing any of those businesses today, but uh, it's good to know they're here. You know, since I have four frames per roll, I'm gonna go ahead and fire an exposure in this full overcast light. All right. That's one in the books. Sometimes I like to take a shot even before the light's perfect just in case something happens that's gonna make later shots impossible. Like a big truck moving in front of the building. Um, I at least have one shot already secured. It's my insurance.
I'd say this is about 70% of the way there. The composition is dialed in how I wanted it, and all the elements of the scene are there, but the light just isn't quite right. Now, I'm not opposed to full overcast light. There are scenes where it's the perfect fit, and I've used it before my photography with great results. But this just isn't one of those scenes. Deep overcast light really dulls things down. Tonal contrast and color contrast both decrease a lot. Not to mention the bluish color balance you end up with. That, of course, can be corrected to a degree in the computer or darkroom, which I did do a bit here in the scan, but it's never quite the same as shooting it in different light. And if you're thinking, why not just boost contrast in the computer? You can, somewhat, but you just won't get the same results as capturing it in higher contrast light. So I needed to wait for the perfect timing. And goddamn did I end up waiting. It felt like the cloud cover was never going to burn off. I should have brought a six-pack and a lounge chair for this one. been out here for over an hour now. The clouds still haven't burned off. This time yesterday, they were burned off an hour and a half ago. Getting a little frustrated. But it is so close to burning off. But I got a hard out in 45 minutes. So if I ain't done, if I don't have this shot within 45 minutes, I'm just gonna have to pack up and leave. I gotta get to a client's shoot. Oh, really hope it works out. I don't wanna come back here again. Okay, it's go time. The light is just starting up. It's only gonna get better from here and then it'll rapidly get worse when the sun fully breaks through. Okay, doing F32 at 115th. F32 is definitely overkill from the depth of field, but I'm not worried about slow shutter speeds because I'm not shooting dusk. And it's still well away from the narrowest aperture. Just when you start to get some refraction. Just a little bit. Light's changing fast. Okay, just so getting a little bit of that soft light. It's breaking through. Yep, it's fire one now. Okay. The light continued to improve, and so I kept making exposures until I'd run out of both frames and time. I had a brief moment of panic as a delivery truck arrived precisely when the light was hitting its stride, but luckily the thinning cloud cover held out long enough for him to carry on out of my composition. I would have loved to stay just another 10 minutes. I think that's when the light was going to get perfect, but I just couldn't do it. Duty called. Some other shitty buildings needed me. Well, I feel a whole lot better already. Um, I don't know if the pictures came out exactly how I wanted. These are only the first two frames and I gotta get some color correction going on them. But um, just the act of going out and taking these pictures did me a whole lot of good. Because I'm kinda like a border collie. Like, uh, I just need some sheep to herd. Uh, or I'm gonna start gnawing on my own foot. Doesn't matter how you know meaningless those uh, sheep might be to my larger body of work, I just need to feel like I'm doing something. Um, there's a metaphor in there somewhere, uh, but, uh, felt good to go out and take these pictures. 
Now, the light never really got perfect, perfect. Got close, but um, I really wanted the sky to break behind the building quite a bit more than it did. But the last frame of the day was the one that's gonna be closest, I think. So I'm anxious to get to that one. Um, but uh, you know, if it's not perfect, I don't think I'm gonna be going back and trying again because to get this light, I just end up having to camp out on that center divider for so freaking long that um, I just don't really feel like doing that again. Uh, it's not my idea of a good time, I guess. But uh, gotta f finish these scans, get them color corrected, and then uh, we'll get the final verdict on whether I'm happy with the photos. I'm a firm believer that no photo can ever be 100% perfect. Even if everything else went exactly according to plan, there will always be one element that's not quite what I wanted. In this case, it's that sky behind the building. I got the light how I wanted, with its beautiful soft shadows. All the subjects are perfect, you know, with that single old truck in the parking lot, the lawnmowers out front, even that appliance sign swung out of the way to reveal the washers behind it. It's like everything cooperated for once except for the sky. This soft, somewhat directional light reaches a whole other level of gorgeous when it's in front of a mostly clear sky. I actually stumbled upon that combo in my backyard about a week later, and you can see how beautiful it is. Unfortunately, this happened to be on a Sunday when the lawnmower shop was closed. So really, that's the only thing about this shot I'm not super pleased with. But I feel, and I may be alone on this one, that it's actually a good thing that no photo is ever perfect. I think chasing perfection is far more fulfilling than achieving it. Plus, I got two words for you, my friend. Wabi sabi. There's beauty and imperfection. Embrace it. Oh, and if you're thinking, why not just switch out the sky in Photoshop? Get the hell out of my office. Now to really drive home how much different this light is compared to full overcast, let's take a look at the first shot again. You can see how much more dull everything looks. And it's not just a darker exposure, by the way. You'll note that the deepest shadows are no different, and the sky is actually brighter in this one. But if you look closely at all of the vertical planes facing the camera, so like the front of the buildings, for instance, those planes were all facing where the sun was breaking through the clouds, and so they got a little extra splash of luminosity. That also brings with it increased contrast and better color rendition. And this is the magic of this quality of light. You get more contrast than fully diffused light, but without the harsh shadows of strong directional light. While I was out taking these photos, I relied heavily on my light meter to continually check the contrast range of the tones in my scene, comparing the differences in EV values between various points. This, along with examining the softness of the shadows, helped me determine whether the light was changing at all, whether it was changing in the right way, and of course, when to fire my exposures. You may know how much I love little vignettes of small businesses and eclectic scenes like this, so I feel good about taking this shot. I don't know if it precisely qualifies as contributing to a meaningful body of work, but at least I don't feel like setting fire to my binders full of negatives anymore. So, as always, thanks for coming along with me on this little mental breakdown. I do hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. If you enjoy my videos and want to buy me a beer to say thanks, check the link in the description.